or it's too quiet. Sure. Yeah. I 100% like I'm not going to be like, oh, you're wrong. Like, no, mm. okay, that's fine. I get that. Yeah. And also, there's a lot that goes into those things. It doesn't sound good. Ever? A lot of need right now to get yeah. a lot of things at most. And yeah, like, at okay, most. so we're just paying some kid to like just do the thing. Like, yeah. no one's QCing it, no one's listening to it, no one's saying, actually, don't like that. Like, yeah. they're just like, okay, is that the thing? I don't even know how to listen to it. Okay, cool, put it up. So yeah, um, Dolby outfitted a, a couple of um, a couple of cars with with mm. uh, Atmos, and I got to sit in one of those. And it was an incredible experience. It was really fun. Wow. Really fun. They had a couple of those like, the bigger Teslas, and yeah. that they like retrofitted, and, yeah. and you know they're experimenting and learning yeah, yeah, yeah. and showing off, and they exactly. they sound incredible. It was really fun to sit in there and listen. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that future. And I think, Man. I think the more people get used to it and the more they're hearing it without even knowing exactly when they hear something in stereo, they're going to be like, why does that sound weird? Why does that exactly. so, sound so small? Yeah. So I, yes, I do think yeah. there's a huge learning curve to making it sound as, um, as good as stereo. Yeah. And also we're we're there. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, I think I think yeah. we're gonna get used to it. I think yeah. it's just like any other new technology that hits the scene. Eventually, it yeah. proliferates throughout that. And even yes. if even if our generation or the previous generations don't tap into the full measure of it, mm -hmm. it's the next generation. Like our kids grow are growing up, and they don't know anything but besides a touchscreen, you mm -hmm. know what I mean, at this point. They, they're, right. they're babies, they're coming out at three and four months and they're being introduced to touchscreens. Mm -hmm. and so that's all they know for is consuming content or consuming data or information is yeah. all on a screen, it's all touch. Like we grew up with mouse mm -hmm. and keyboards and that was our, our that was our inner and a screen in front of us that was non-touchable right. and that's our format. And so the same thing with people with listening to stereo mix. Most people that I talk about, most uh, talk to or engineers that I talk to and we talk about uh, Adobe Atmos and spatial audio, they always say it sucks. Hate mm -hmm. it. Sure. Hate it. Sounds terrible. Mm -hmm. You know, 18 luffs. It's not loud enough. Blah, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. They talk about all these things that they hate about it. Mm -hmm. And and even some on some people on the consumer level or at the same sure. space, they like, they don't hate. But we've been used to left, right. Mm hmm for generate for forever, you know, the dawn of time when we were given ears. Yes. You know, we've been used to left, right. And now, but that's not how the human ear works. There's, it's 360, you know, uh, of, of the way we even hear things. And so, but when we music consuming content, we've been used to just left, right. Mm -hmm. And now you introduce these other things into people who have been used to stereo. It sounds weird mm -hmm. and they're still getting used to it, but this next generation or these next five to 10 years are really going to, I think, like you said, proliferate mm -hmm. that throughout. There's also, and I'm never gonna knock people who are like, I don't like it, it doesn't sound as good. Yeah. Like, or it's too quiet. Sure, yeah. I 100%, like I'm not gonna be like, oh, you're wrong. Like, no, yeah. okay, that's fine, I get that. Yeah. And also, there's a lot that goes into those things. I can only imagine. It doesn't sound good. Ever? Yeah. Or, or just like, you know, there's a lot of different ways to create an Atmos mix yeah. and depending on what source files you have and what your experience is and like, okay, are we just adding reverb? No yeah. one likes that. Why no. would you do that? Yeah. Um, or, you know, do you have control over more than, you know, just a few stereo stems? You can do some really cool things and you can make it really great. And also we're learning new techniques and trying to yeah. figure out how to how to make this translate in headphones and how to make it translate not just in the binaural rendering from at, from yeah. Dolby, but also in spatial audio, wow. which is a whole other beast. Wow. You know, so there's a lot that goes into that. Heck and yeah. and yes, some of it's getting used to it. And yeah. I think some of it's really legitimate concerns about the sonic integrity and about how it sounds and how it's being mixed. And like, are people, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of need right now to get yeah. a lot of things at most. And yeah, like, okay, most. so we're just paying some kid to like, just do the thing. Like yeah. no one's QCing it, no one's listening to it, no one's saying actually don't like that. Like yeah. they're just like, okay, is that the thing? I don't even know how to listen to it. Okay, cool, put it up. Like, like okay, so there's a lot of, variables, a lot yeah. of variables and a lot of issues. And also the math is getting better, right? Yeah. Like Apple's spatial audio sounds better today than it did on launch day. Oh, definitely. So yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. They're, 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 they're improving it. Yeah, this is the worst it's ever gonna be. 
and it, I liked it was it. worse a year ago and it'll be better in a year. So yeah. like, yeah, we're constantly, you know, I mean, they have a lot of smart people doing a lot of smart math over yeah, there that are trying to make this sound good. It. So yeah, yeah they care. It. Listen, I hope you are enjoying this conversation with John Blast. Uh, I got something really quick that I want to show you though. Check this out. Hey, this is John Blass. You may have seen that I just announced my Gospel Producers Mixing class. My intent here is to let you into my thought process, my insights, how and why I do what I do every day to create the best art that I possibly can for clients that I respect so much. Um, I get to work with some really incredible artists and this is how I think about mixing and music and art and how I get to the finish line with these records. Click the link in my bio or scan the QR code to gain access to this class. I think I think you I think you're totally right about that, and uh, that's what we're gonna do. So thinking in that standpoint and bringing it home, uh, a couple of questions that kind of popped to mind: What? Okay, what are the the differences first? Let's let's the, let's see if, if what that is. The differences between just Dolby Atmos, mm -hmm. Adobe Atmos mix, versus a spatial audio mix. Mm -hmm. You know, because you said that they're two kind of different beasts, so to speak. Yeah. Um, how are they different and also how are they the same? Yeah. For those who don't so, know. So spatial audio is Apple's proprietary spatialization techniques. Mm -hmm. um, that's their thing. Um, yeah. They use Dolby Atmos master mixes okay. to do that. So they're, what they accept is... Uh, a Dolby ADM file, which is the mm -hmm, Dolby, mm -hmm. that's the master file, right? And they take that, that's what can get translated to speakers. They put that through their thing, their thing. and they call that spatial audio. That's mm -hmm. their brand of Dolby Atmos mixes. Yeah. Um, so currently just... that's the only immersive format they take. Um, gotcha. uh, I don't know if that'll change or not, but currently they, take, they take Dolby Atmos. When you look at your Apple Music app while you're playing it, it says Dolby Atmos on it. It has Got that it. logo, yep, yep. Um, but it's through their spatialization app. Dolby, um, so it's a speaker format, right? Atmos is a speaker format, mm -hmm. but they also have a binaural rendering, okay. which we have settings while we're mixing to make things sound farther, closer, like yeah. we can change that kind of stuff that doesn't go into the master file that is submitted to apple so okay. they're doing their own thing independent of the binaural rendering um they're using the speaker the speaker file basically for for apple spatialization and that's to create yeah. you know the ability for them to play the same thing on the home pod yeah. and on you know whatever else they're playing um that you know they have their own reasons and wow. everyone's gonna yell and argue and be upset about it and it has upsides and downsides just yeah. like anything so just like the minus 18 lefts requirement like that's right there are real legitimate reasons for that yeah. and th we have to abide by that because if you're going to take a you know this massive file with all these outputs and say actually we have to play it through one speaker because it's going through this mono you know smart speaker yeah okay well you need headroom then because all that stuff has to get folded in right and interpreted to be how loud coming out of the speaker and okay so then you need headroom because it's gonna go over minus 18 at that point and um and you have to make sure you're within spec for these hardware devices so Dolby works with all that stuff for anything at most enabled wow yeah. so it's like you said it's so it's adobe it's a the atmos um thing folding into the spatial audio setup yeah. for the most part yeah that's so what spatial it starts audio it starts is. Yeah. In, it starts with that and then it folds in and then yes. apple's interpretation yes. of that is and it's wildly different than the binaural. I can only imagine. so oh, what yeah. does that translation look like like uh, i mean are you know you're mixing in dolby mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. and then you're uh submitting it in you know through Apple and it gets mm -hmm. submitted in. And so when you have you found yourself like, man, when you're listening back to a uh, spatial audio mix mm -hmm. that you did in, in you know, ha what is those what is that process been looking well, like for you? I don't um, I don't wait that long to hear it. Um, since, it, you know, the the process used to be you had to like print a mix, yeah. export it as MP4, 
Send uh, it to yourself, save it to your phone, it has to be literally on your phone, and then play it back on yeah. AirPod Pros or Maxes or whatever, and then you can hear, that'll be played back in spatial That's audio. That's what it'll sound like. Gotcha. Now, since Logic introduced real-time spatial audio monitoring, I have it set up, I'm routing uh, a re-render from the, from the Atmos renderer back into Logic, so I can in real-time listen to the speakers, wow. the binaural, and the Apple spatial, so I'm constantly referencing. And I'm constantly, if I'm going to put something in the height channels, like, oh, how's that going to translate in spatial? It. I can just listen in real time. So That's crazy. Yeah. It's pivotal. It's, yeah. It's, it makes life so much better, yeah. honestly. So, yeah. Definitely. So I know what it's going to sound like um, That's before good. it goes on Apple. That was what I was wondering. I was wondering if there was any difference in, in that. Like, mm -hmm. you just all of a sudden, you're like, oh, you did just spend all this time putting this, uh, this sure. OB Atmos thing together. Sure. And you send it, then, then, you know, months later or whatever, you, you, you're like, oh, the, the mix came out. You plop, pop it in, and you're like, oh, this sounds terrible. Right. Jesus, what what happened? Yeah. You know, because I've heard those horror stories with yeah. mix, just regular stereo mix. I can imagine what yeah. what happens with the on the Adobe side. Right. Yeah, you can't wait that long. You yeah. got to hear it how the consumer is going to hear it. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Listen, I want to take this opportunity to thank you for watching this video. This is an excerpt from a two hour plus interview that we did with John Blast as a part of his Art of Mixing Gospel Masterclass. You can get access to the full two hour interview plus an additional three hours of content on mixing from one of the industry's best mixing engineers. So if you're interested, check out the link below or scan the QR code right here. And if you're not interested in those, then check this video out right here.